We live in an absolutely amazing time when it comes to retro and emulation. Because there are so many pieces of hardware out there, they're not very expensive, but you can still play a lot of games. Here in the channel, we came across the Raspberry Pi number 3 and 4 a couple of times. Or they just use an Android box, modified or original, with some emulator like on it. But in this video, we're not going to talk about these options. We'll talk about it a little bit more, but now I just wanted to take a close look at this. This mini PC I've picked up recently. <laughs> hey guys, but welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the mini PC I recently picked up. I didn't pick it up a very long time ago, but it is a very old one. Nowadays here, we can buy so many cool devices for not a lot of money. And yes, you can pick up a very cheap Dell Optiplex and they come in all kinds of versions and they are dirty cheap, maybe even cheaper than a mini PC. But with these gigantic, let's say, desktop PCs, we can play so many cool things, but we're going to talk about it at another video. Because I wanted to take a close look at this mini version. I personally really love mini PCs, it will not take up a lot of space and we have so much potential nowadays when it comes to performance. Of course, if you have more than enough space, you can just use yourself like a normal desktop PC. But if you're like me and you want to have like a very tiny, let's say retro emulation beast of a machine that doesn't take up a lot of space, but still come packed up with a lot of power, I think this can be a very interesting option also for you. We're going to do a little bit of Barasira. We're going to slap it on here. We're going to test it out just to see how far we can push it. Because sometimes you will be surprised what you can do with a tiny PC like this compared with a Raspberry Pi. And of course the Raspberry Pi is even tinier than the Lenovo mini PC I'm having here. And this thing has so much cool things you can play with it. So let's talk about it and what are our options here. And then we do have the option for an Android box. This is one of those super console -like devices. They come in all kinds of shapes that we're going to talk about in different videos. But this is basically like your typical box that you can get with a very fast chip. They are like very cheap to buy, but there are still some things that I don't like about the ME Alec. The limitation that you don't have with a mini PC. So if you're going to look into retro emulation, if you're going to look up the really old school stuff, think about up to PlayStation 1, these three devices can run it without any hassle. So basically for that, like if you want to play some old school stuff, I think both systems, or better said all three systems will be fine. And it's more the question what you prefer. The first thing that I think is big of the downside to the Raspberry Pi 4, you need to have some knowledge about the Raspberry Pi when it comes to Linux and let's say scripts and stuff like that. I think it's not that super user friendly, depending on what kind of operating system you're using, of course. But in the end, this thing does have like a lot of potential, but will have some things that it can do. For example, if you're going to look into MAME, we cannot really play some Tekken MAME or some other MAME games that we can play on a medium PC. And there we go again, we get this minor advantage compared with the Raspberry Pi 4. And the price, this thing retail for around like 100 euro and even more sometimes, where we do have like a very cheap mini PC sometimes for 65 or maybe like a part of the Raspberry Pi price. And like I mentioned before, so when you're looking at this tiny Android box, it's maybe powerful enough to run most of the retro games on very nice resolutions or the normal native resolution. The thing is, I love these things for just your basic typical gaming. Some have an on-off switch, some don't. But in the end, like if you go to the higher end stuff, PlayStation Portable is absolutely a no-go. Especially when you're looking at the main, the same story like the Raspberry Pi, we do have some limitations over there. So in short, if you want to emulate some PlayStation 2, some GameCube Wii, we do have some limitation because still it's a very old mini PC and because of they are like so small, you always have less power than your normal typical desktop with the same specifications, if that makes any sense what I'm saying. But this thing does have some interesting things. So to begin with, we do have an on and off switch, we have a headphone jack out, and we do have like two USB ports. Nothing really fancy, <laughs> the Android boxes don't have always an on and off switch, so that part, it's a win for the mini PC. Depending on the age, the, let's say the later models don't have HDMI, not a big of a deal. We do have a converter for this, so we can just plug it in and use HDMI with audio. We have some extra USB ports over here. We have a VGA out for the old school part. We have an RG45 internet connection and then again another USB port. So we got five in total and input for the power supply. But in case, there are some things that you need to know before you're going to get into this. So what we're going to need is ourselves like a hard drive. These devices support most of the time 2.5 inches. Hard drives, 2 terabyte and bigger, are very cheap to buy. If you're going to get into an SSD, that's going to be freaking awesome, but it's going to be like also freaking expensive. The same money you can buy in a couple of these devices, to give you like a great example. 
another thing you can go if this thing has like an internal card reader some of them have it you can even use an sd card or you can just use seriously like a thumb drive formatted with bodocera and slap all your files on here there's only a very small one like a 16 gigabyte so if you want to play some retro stuff you can plug it in you have like a lot of stuff you can put under there depending like what direction you want to go of course Another thing you can get yourself is basically like in kit. And what do I mean with the kit? So nowadays we have the option to get yourself like a very nice case like this. And in the inside, we're going to find stuff like and two controllers. And they are like ready to go. This is like your high quality chemical PlayStation 2 controllers with a dongle. And inside we're going to get ourselves a hard drive. And what is very interesting with the Pauki pad, for example, we can just plug it in. You only need to add your stuff and you're ready to go. So that's very convenient if you ask me. It even comes with a very nice protection plush. <laughs> you pay a lot for basically like a couple of things. They even include like some manuals to say like how you need to add stuff, how you can need to connect to the internet. But this is like a more easy way to go to. And the crazy thing is they even sell it in all kinds of versions. And yeah, think about like all kinds of formats, like 500 gigabyte, one terabyte, two terabyte. You can just grab yourself an hard drive. You don't need to buy anything and just slap your files on and you're ready to go. But there is another thing you need to take consideration if you're going to use the USB option. It's absolutely great if you want to use, let's say, a 2.5 inch drive. You just want to plug it in and you just want to play. Of course, in 3.5 is also possible. But the downside is, you can already see it over here. These hard drives are very fast. It comes even with 3.0 USB. And these devices having only 2.0. So in other words, you're going to lose some speed in here. So in my opinion, if you're going to get yourself an old system and you just want to use this thing for retro gaming, what you need to do is open it up and slap the hard drive in here. Okay, so next up, what we need to do is very simple. Get yourself the part that you want to have. For example, the hard drive, the USB or the SD card. We're going to convert some Podocera on it. And when it's ready, we can just slap it in and start messing around with it and build ourselves like a retro emulation beast. Alright, so what you need to do before you can, of course, play some retro games, you need to download the Podocera Linux. You're just going to need to go to the page itself and go to download. Here you will find the page where you can basically find all the files that you're going to need. So we're going to use this version, the standard desktop or laptop version. It's basically used for the x86 and the x64. So you can see like they even have one specially for the Intel NUC and even now they, on, on Apple based computers. But another thing that is pretty damn cool, we have Battlesera for all kinds of handhelds. So it's quite an interesting piece of software that has been ported to so many pieces of hardware. Nevertheless, there is so much stuff that we can do with it. But in this video, we're going to focus on the PC. So what we're going to do is download this. You can use a direct link or a torrent file seems to be. And yeah, basically get this and put it on your hard drive so we can start. Okay, so with this version or this Lenovo mini PC doesn't have an M2 SSD inside. We're just going to keep it simple and keep it cheap because the two terabyte SSDs are very expensive and a normal hard drive are cheap as it can be. We're going to unplug the original hard drive and we're going to slap this thing in here. And basically what we're going to get ourselves is a completely configured Bottle Zero Mini PC. We're going, we're going to power it on and we're going to have a, like a lot of fun. And we do have like the maximum speed because we have it connected with a SATA connector. And not with a slow USB. Something I just want to point out, I've noticed in my previous video, is like when you're looking at mini PCs, I always recommend it that we do have like two DIMMs installed. For example, I'm having eight gigabyte in total, but I have two times four gigabyte. So in this case, it's more enough for retro gaming, but we do have like the best performance. They messed it up in the beginning with some Super Console X devices. You pay a lot of money for it and you're only going to get like a 60 gigabyte or a gigabyte, only one DIMM inside. A little bit of a bummer, but I just wanted to point it out. In this case, there's no going to be any problem. But okay, so everything has been configured, set up, and depending on what kind of theme you're going to have, this is what you're going to see. So what I like about it is just simply like it's plug and play, like a game system. When you're powering on the PC, it will boot up instantly into Bodocera if you're going to implement only that hard drive into the system. I'm mostly using the Xbox 360 controller because this is an absolutely great controller. I personally love it. It plays very well and not to forget it has the Inks input and so a lot of devices will recognize it and you can configure it with a Bodicera. Also the from China, we do have like some other brands. Maybe I can make a separate video about it, what kind of controllers are supported. But let's be honest guys, there is so much out there and yeah, for Xbox 360, they are cheap and yeah, they can still be found second hand and in the end they will work just fine. But how about your performance? What can we actually play with a mini PC compared to a Raspberry Pi? 
because the Raspberry Pi and basically the Super Console X or the Ami Alec devices, Android boxes, have basically like a lot of similarities. I think with N64, they are going to get a better performance with many games. Then we have like Nintendo GameCube and some Wii. We do have maybe some games that will run, but take consideration we need a lot of power to run this perfectly. And we're just using an older i3 Intel CPU. And again, like we do have like a lot of games will play even perfect on the native resolution. Sometimes even can upscale it a little bit, but just going to use like native resolution. Just wanted to show you. So what we're going to do, we're going to focus on the higher end stuff because basically the old school stuff runs just fine on this. But yeah, the same goes for PlayStation 2. It's going to be like a very difficult platform to emulate on some cheaper chips or better said older chips and PlayStation 3 is out of the table. We need to have more power for that. But also I expect more and better performance for PlayStation Portable. But nevertheless, let's get into it and let's see what we can basically get for the money and buying and building in Lenovo with some Balashera. All right, so the first step I wanted to do is MAME with some Tekken. These will not run on your typical, let's say, Android boxes. And I think that makes this Bodoshera with a cheap PC more appealing than your typical Ami Alec devices or Raspberry Pi. Alright, so next up I want to try some other Tekken game, but this time it's going to be the Tekken Tech. This is another video game that is quite very difficult to emulate on some cheaper mini PCs. But I just wanted to push it to the limit and show you what you can do with an old school i3 Intel. And surprisingly you can see even this tiny mini PC can run this perfectly. On the full speed. Okay, so next up, another system that doesn't run very well on those cheap boxes. A Raspberry Pi, it runs a little bit better. And I got killed, by the way. Yep. New Patrol, absolutely here. But what I wanted to say, like, that runs absolutely great on Balasera 2 and this mini PC. Alright, so next up I want to try Killer Instinct, another game a lot of people requesting all the freaking time, but doesn't run on some device like Ami Alec and the Raspberry Pi. Alright, so next up, N64, a system that has so much problems when it comes especially the Ami Alec or the cheaper Android boxes. Most of the game will run on native resolution to get the best performance out of it. And again, like it's depending on how powerful your system is. Oh, one thing is like they messed up the freaking controls with this. Is this guy made of a freaking metal or what? What the hell? Oh, quite difficult to play this game. Very long time. Here we go. <laughs> let's move on to the next one. Alright, so next up, let's try for fun just the F0 G8 on the GameCube. We just push this thing to the limit. Because this is basically what it is with the mini PC. You can already hear like it struggles. Alright, let's see how fast the loading times are. Oof. You can already hear it, you can already see it. So basically with an F0 GX, a very demanding game on the GameCube, you're going to get a lot of stuttering and absolutely not a fun gameplay. Let's play a little bit, show you. Maybe we will get a decent FPS here, but the world will be parts about it's going to be stuttering like crazy. That's exactly what I mean. Alright, so next up I want to try some PlayStation 2. It's going to be Tekken. So we'll give you 
an overview of how it is will run. You can already hear and see that it runs pretty damn slow. But guys, again, it's just this system is not perfectly optimized for this. And Tekken is even like the, the game that is normally should run at least, but. You know. All right, so next up, let's try PlayStation Portable. Depending on what kind of PC you're using, because if you're going to deep, deep dive into the really old school PCs, you're not going to get like great performance PlayStation Portable. But this i3, you're going to get some pretty damn good performance. It's still a native resolution, don't expect any miracles with God of War, of course, but you still have like way better performance than you're going to get on your typical, let's say, Super Console X device or Android box. And that's what I really like about these mini PCs. You can buy them for really cheap and they're going to get like cheaper in the future. And you can do some awesome things like this. Just enjoy some like say PlayStation Portable on your television. Some pretty damn good FPS. But again, the same story applies to Sega Saturn, a system that runs with mixed performance on some cheaper boxes. But with some PCs, we're going to get a way better performance. Again, like depending what kind of emulator you're running, because the Sega Saturn is quite difficult to emulate. And not, and not a big, I'm still using an old emulator, so I'm not going to get the best performance as I'm even making this video. But you can see even on Darius Gaiden, in two dimensional games, I tested out some three dimensional games, they run pretty damn good. So when you're looking at the specifications, I just wanted to show you, this Intel Core i3 comes with 8GB of RAM. Yeah, I must say that I was quite surprised to see how good this thing actually can play a lot of things. Especially when you're looking at the form factor, I think that is something that personally really appeals to me in combination with the price. The price is very difficult to pinpoint for you, depending on where you live and where you find it. Maybe you can even get a mini PC that has better performance or better specifications for even like less the money I've paid for, depending when you see this video and where you live. But in the end, I just wanted to make this video to show you what is even possible nowadays. When, let's say, the newer products coming out faster, the older stuff like this Lenovo is going to get even cheaper. And besides like running it on Windows and using some boring alpha stuff, you can even turn this thing into a retro emulation beast. It's absolutely amazing how good the performance is for the money you're paying for it. And I think it's a pretty damn cool deal. Let me know in the comments, did you ever make something like that or you would consider? Let me know. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become on the Wicked family, and it would be great to see you in the next video. Mm.